The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> Do you think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Yes. Yes. Well, I must have never been paying attention when you All right. What happened? You can let that run uh, a little bit longer next time. Hey, what happened? Huh? Who? What? We're here. All right. We're here. Tom Duggan here on the Paying Attention television podcast, radio podcast. We're going out on uh, iTunes. We're on YouTube. Uh, we're on all kinds of places, so you want to go to the Paying Attention podcast page, and you want to subscribe to that, and you want to go to my YouTube page. And w- which which camera do I look into, by the way? I don't even know anymore. I just randomly look out. Uh, oh, the one straight ahead. All right, thank you, uh, Stu. Stu, our fine, fine producer here on the Paying Attention uh, television podcast. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of stuff to get to today. I know I was in the middle of saying something, but I've got ADHD, so I forgot what I was saying. Um, we have uh, Fred and Meredith here to do news. We've got Lion Dave, Dave, uh, Dave O'Brien from the Lawrence Lions Club to chat with us about some stuff. We've got Ira and Kiana with their IQ segment. They're going to be talking about – I'm actually glad that they're here to talk about this because when I saw it, uh, I was like, well, they're going to talk about these Tide Pods. I have no idea what that is. But I've been seeing all these memes on Facebook about Tide Pods and people joking about Tide Pods and eating Tide Pods. I have no idea what any of that means. I was going to explain it all to us with Kiana. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to thank our sponsor, Twin Lights Security. Uh, Mike Thibodeau and Patrick uh, uh, at Twin Lights Security uh, provide my security when I'm out driving around in Lawrence getting shot at. Um so we want to thank them, and we've got a couple of uh, new sponsors coming in next week. I think BNI is coming in next week. Sweet, um, great, great. And, and we're really looking forward to working with BNI. They're a business networking group. They get together at like some friggin' ungodly hour, like <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning. It's way too early for you. And they were like, "Look, we want to buy full page ads. We want to buy ads on your on your show. Um, you know, but would you join?" I'm like, "Geez, seven o'clock, man. That's I'm just <laughs> getting happening. I'm just getting to bed at like five thirty, uh, and you want me to be there at seven? <laughs> But if they're going to spend money... I'll go for you. Oh, you will? Would you I'll do that? I'll go for you. Oh, yeah. God bless no you. No problem. Excellent. All right. So Meredith's going to be my proxy <laughs> on, on the days that I can't make it, which would be like every day. Um, so we want to we want to thank them. We want to thank all of our sponsors uh, at, the, at the Valley Patriot. The Valley Patriot newspaper is out. Pick it up. And uh, let's just get right to news, shall we? There's got to be all kinds of stuff going on in the world that I can be snarking about. Oh, there's lots of stuff going on in Excellent. the world. How are you, Tom? I'm doing really tired. Good. Well, that's all right. We'll wake you up here. I need, I need a vacation really bad. As long as you're paying attention. I am. All right. We start off today with big news out of the city of Lawrence. Lawrence, the, shocking. Lawrence, shocking. Lawrence Police Chief James Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick excuse me, recently announced that he was stepping down. Fitzpatrick, who's a native of Lawrence, has been a police officer in the city for over two decades, and he served as chief since 2013. Uh, Lawrence Mayor Dan Rivera appointed Captain Roy Vasque as interim chief as the city launches a search for a full-time permanent replacement. Vasque says he fully intends to be a candidate for the position full-time. Now, Tom, you uh, watched the business of the Lawrence Police Department pretty carefully I do. and uh, have had a lot to say about Chief Fitzpatrick in the past. So what do you make about all this? Well, listen, and I know Chief Fitzpatrick thinks that I was picking on him um, because he's a super nice guy. And we all have someone in our life that's a super nice person, but they're also very sensitive and they Mm -hmm. take things personal. So um, my criticism was never about Chief Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. My criticism was always about the fact that the mayor had tied his hands and doesn't let him do his job. Right. Right. And the only criticism I ever had of the chief was that he didn't stand up to the mayor and defend his guys. Now, when we had that beheading last year, um, it was some, some idiot reporter from Boston asked the mayor during a press conference um, that the, the family members of the kid that was beheaded were complaining about the way they'd handled the investigation. Right. And the mayor threw the cops right under the bus immediately because, of course, the press is there and they're more important than cops to any politician. Yeah. Uh, and he threw the cops under the bus and said he was calling for an internal state police investigation into the way the Lawrence cops handled it. Mind you, the Lawrence cops solved this crime less than 24 hours after the body of this beheaded kid was found. Mm -hmm. And Chief Fitzpatrick stood there and didn't defend his guys. And that was like the only criticism in the, in the, since 2013 that he's come on board. My only criticism of him was that he should have defended his guys. The rest of it was just criticism of the fact that the mayor literally ties the police hands. He literally calls off police pursuits. He, 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 he really micromanages like everything in the department from where they put their desks to where they have their lockers. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Um, so I, I 
I really feel bad that the chief has re retired, resigned, however, however you want to say it as chief. Um, I would have preferred that he stay and stand up to the mayor. Yep. But that's not an easy thing to do, especially if you're a nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, so, so, so Lawrence is a city that is having problems with violent crime, problems with drugs, and it's got a police department that uh, the officers haven't had a contract now for several years, yeah, right? Four, four years. Four years. So how does all this change that, or does it? I mean, what do you I, see happening? I don't think it changes the contract situation, because that's really just all up to the mayor. The chief right. has no say in it whatsoever. Yep. Um, the real problem is he doesn't want to pay the cops because they haven't had a contract for four years, so if he settles the, their contract tomorrow... He's got to give them four years back pay at the new rate, yep. and that's a lump sum payment that he doesn't want to pay. Now, mind you, when they when they do the budget, when the city council and the mayor do the budget, that money is allocated. Mm -hmm. But since they're not working on a new contract, that money got spent on other things. Right. It's gone. And so now if yeah. he wants to pay them and settle their contract, he's going to take that money from somewhere else. Yep. And that's why you know I don't understand why any community, much less the city of Lawrence, no less – uh, wouldn't want to pay their cops and, and, and give them their contract. You I think, think, right? I mean, yeah. these, these guys get shot at every day. They get stabbed. Um, they're dealing with domestic violence, the homeless issue, the fentanyl yeah. problem, the fentanyl labs. They're the heroes. Heroin. They're heroes. And yeah. and then the mayor's just like, uh, you know, I think it's more important to have bongo lessons. Let's do a community development block grant <laughs> for Dominican bongo lessons because that's real friggin' important. <laughs> and, and I just shake my head like, you know, it's just a matter of priority, you know, and you can always tell what someone's priority is by what they do, not what they say. Right. I'm going to talk about that a little in my rant too right. later on. Very so good. speaking of Lawrence police, we have an update on the murder of a man found inside a motor vehicle on Reservoir Street in Lawrence on New Year's Eve. According to the Valley Patriot, Lawrence police and Mass State Police violent fugitive apprehension team have arrested 49-year-old Jose Urena of Lawrence for the murder of Jeffrey Santana Paguero. According to Lawrence police, the suspect is a dangerous individual. He was scheduled to be arraigned at Lawrence District Court this morning. So you were actually at the scene, Tom, and I was watching I that was. video of you driving out on the dark road on the edge of my seat. What is that like being out there with the police right after it's, something like it's, that? It's uh, well, it depends. You know, sometimes it's you don't even think about it because yeah. I do I do it a lot. Right. Right. Uh, I don't even think about it. And then, you know, there are times like the night that I get shot at where you think about it a lot. Right. Um, the night of that murder, um, we got there just like seconds before they blocked off the road. Yeah. And it's on Reservoir Street near the uh, Bellevue Cemetery. But I know the Bellevue Cemetery like the back of my hand. Um, so I, I went into the cemetery and drove around all the little back roads and actually found a spot at the cemetery to get the greatest video ever <laughs> of the cops with the bullet riddled car and with the flashlights and everything. Um, and they actually thought at one point that like I was a bad guy. Like they saw some, somebody up there pointing something at them and they all <laughs> yeah. freaked out. So the only time I really get nervous is when the cops don't realize who I am because right. I'm kind of far away. Uh, you can very easily get shot when they think your camera might be a gun. Right. Um, so I get nervous about that. I get nervous when I'm driving through alleyways. We, I drive through a lot of alleyways when I'm when I'm chasing police calls because it's easier to get places, um, and that's where a lot of shootings and a lot of uh, drug deals go on in the alleyways. So I get a little nervous, but I've got Mike Mike Thibodeau, my uh, my security guy in Twin Lake Security. Yep. Um, we had somebody following us around Sunday night. Wow. Um, you know, had no, and I, I I was taking all kinds of alleys and left. I went up a one way the wrong way, and they were still behind me. Um, so at one point we just pulled over where the chimney truck is over at the common where there's like a ton of people getting yeah. tacos and I got the plate number and, and we took care of it that Thank way. God. Wow. I like to take care of things off book when stuff like that happens. I don't Good post, way to do it. I don't, I don't like to post on Facebook what I did with the, with the plate number or right. who visited who or what, right. what was going on. Right. I prefer just things to kind of be quiet behind the scenes when it comes to stuff like that. Absolutely. But, yeah. Well, Tom, we're going to turn now to the state of New Hampshire where local officials report that there's been a decrease in the number of drug overdose incidents during 2017 a decrease a decrease in incidents but an increase in the number of deaths from you drugs know, like Joe heroin Solomon fentanyl and prescription opioids Joe Solomon said that two weeks he ago he did he did right here on the show yeah. yep so uh, in fact Tom right here in the town of Salem New Hampshire where we're filming today officials reported that they had the highest number of overdose deaths for any year for any year since wow. they started keeping track of the number of fatalities now this news comes just weeks after as you remember New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu pointedly said singled out the city of Lawrence, Massachusetts as the source for many of the drugs that are plaguing the streets of New Hampshire. Yeah. And he vowed to take action, even a means crossing over state lines. Yeah, has he done that yet? Not that I know See, of. See, I'm, I'm a doing kind of guy. Yeah. I don't want to hear that you're going to do something. Do it and then tell me. Right. Maybe um, we wouldn't have heard about it. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I want to see Chris Sununu and I want to see the governor of Maine and the governor of Vermont send every flipping law enforcement officer that they have into the city of Lawrence to help the Lawrence cop clean up 
clean, drain the swamp and clean up the mess. Mm -hmm. The fentanyl labs are all over the city of Lawrence. The, the, the fentanyl is being produced in Lawrence and how we know, we talked about it on other shows. Uh, when the when the uh, the DEA and ICE did that big fentanyl raid in, in June, we were the only ones that were there because right. someone tipped us off. Uh, they held a press conference afterwards where they said, and my numbers might be like ten dollars off, but I'm pretty close. It's like four hundred to four hundred fifty dollars for a finger of heroin in Lawrence. You buy it in Lawrence for four fifty or four hundred dollars. You go up to Manchester, New Hampshire, it's eight hundred dollars. Wow. You go up to Ogunco, Maine, it's twelve hundred dollars. Wow. Wow. So we know through capitalism that things are cheaper where they are more plentiful. Right. Right. And so we know just from those numbers that the fentanyl labs are in Lawrence. We right. know that the drugs are being packaged and, and and distributed out of the city of Lawrence. For officials to deny that and to pretend that oh you're picking on us because we have brown skin really betrays the people of Lawrence, who are the good people of Lawrence, who have to deal with this shit every single day. Mm -hmm. The shootings in their neighborhood, afraid to let their kids go to the park because of needles. Those are the people being betrayed when people like Dan Rivera and city councilors cry and whine about people pointing out the problem. Right. Okay. The city of Boston got some good news today when online retail giant Amazon announced the city is on its top 20 list of places to locate its second headquarters. Amazon officials announced they received about 200 applications for relocation sites from cities across North America. Boston joins New York, Washington, and Dallas on a list of places making Amazon, Amazon shortlist. Amazon says it plans to invest $5 billion in the new headquarters and that the process could result in more than 50,000 new jobs being created locally. A final decision is expected sometime next year. It's a little unclear if Amazon's singling out just the city of Boston and not greater Boston. If so, that's bad news for officials in Haverhill and North Andover who had hoped the retailer might choose a Merrimack Valley site for its new Yeah, I was, hoping, I was hoping for North Andover because I, my book is on Amazon, Heroes in Our Midst, from the pages right. of the Valley Patriot. Absolutely. And if, the, and if, the, and if the, the shipping place is in North Andover, you get your book sooner. Yeah, right. 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 I, I'm shooting for North Andover just for that alone. There you go. Send one of those drones over with it. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. The yep. And the, by the way, the drone's going to be up in the next couple of days. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Tom, uh, final story today, and we just want to sort of start a new segment here on paying attention. What we want to do, uh, Meredith and I work in real estate, uh, in addition to several other Very ventures. exciting topic lately. Very exciting yeah. topic. So we Sellers market, give people, right? It is, and we're going to tell you, tell you a little bit about that. Please we figure do. we give people a little bit of a market update. Um, so if you look at Essex County, Massachusetts right now, there are 161 single-family homes that have been sold so far this year. Now, we're only a couple weeks into the year, but the average price of those properties was just over $527,000. Now, those numbers show a significant slowdown from the same period just a year ago, because back then there were 219 sales, but the average sales price was lower, $495,000. So that could mean that the real estate market is starting to tighten up a little bit. Now, is that good or bad? I mean, if well, so it's good if you're a seller, it's tough if you're a buyer. So one of the signs of that is that right now there aren't as many homes for sale as we might expect or as we might need. Right, uh, A year ago, we had 793 active listings in Essex County, houses for sale. Right now, 694, so 100 fewer houses out there to choose from. So if you're a buyer, it can be a little bit difficult, but if you're a seller, it's a great time to sell. Great. Now, what so. what will it take to make it a buyer's market? It's better when it's a buyer's market, right? It's better when it's a buyer's market. So what what what, what has to happen in the economy? Because I don't know anything about real estate. Yeah. What, what has to happen in the economy for it to go from a seller's market to a buyer's? Is it more money in construction? Is it... It, it could be it? that. It could be a number of different factors. You know, basically more money in people's pockets. One of the difficult things right now for buyers is interest rates have been creeping up in the mortgage market, and that's expected to continue in 2018. So we're not exactly sure what that's going to mean for buyers. But for buyers, what they really need right now is inventory. They need houses out there to buy because there's not enough to choose from, and you get these buyers competing for the same house all the time, bidding wars and and losing out on properties. So, so. what we need is a construction boom, and maybe that's something that our new well, buyers can do. Well, that would be great, but it is tough in Massachusetts because there's not that much available land around downtown Boston, that type of thing. So it's difficult. Yeah, but there's plenty of land in like North Andover. A lot of land, so lots of land up. And in I know New that Hampshire. Methuen is so overdeveloped at this point. I mean, yeah. they've they've so overdeveloped that it's it's actually starting to become like Lawrence. Yeah. 
You know, especially like in the Arlington neighborhood and the Lawrence and the Lawrence borders, mm-hmm. uh, North Andover. Is, I mean, uh, Methuen is just importing people at this uh, right. at this point. Right. Um, so those are interesting numbers, and we're going to try to keep track of those week to week here. Uh, and, and we need a, we, some insight. And we need a, a logo from you guys we with your phone that. number, so we can we can add Excellent. it. So we can add it to oh, the rotation below. There you go. Um, we, uh, Fred and Meredith run a Lyric uh, Properties, Lyric Consulting. We're happy to have them on board here with us. Glad uh, to be here to do the news. They also, you guys, are now my. Uh, officially my now booking agents. That's right. And uh, they're going to, so if you want to book me for like, uh, you want me to talk to your college class, you want me to do a book signing, uh, you want me to come and talk about police line of duty deaths, uh, voter ID, whatever the topics are that uh, that we're experts at at the Valley Patriot. Uh, Give us a call. Yeah, don't call me. Right. Don't call him. Don't no. call, call me. Us. Call Fred right. Meredith. We'll find you, him. If you're going to message me, I'll give you their number. We'll find him. You can call them. Yeah. So, well, thanks so much for the news. Any you guys have anything you. else? No, that's it for today. Is there any way we can just have Meredith sit here for the rest of the show? <laughs> no offense <laughs> taken. No. So, you actually don't mind that I flirt with her at all, do you? Oh, he does mind. <laughs> 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 I might not hurt me. I had to think about that. You had to look to her to see if it was okay uh, to answer right, that yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we got uh, Ira and Keanu are going to talk about Tide Pods, I guess. Uh, we have Lion Dave, Dave O'Brien from the Lawrence Lions Club, and then I've got all kinds of stuff to get to. We're going to talk about racism. We're going to talk about illegal aliens. Uh, we're going to talk about the Lawrence homeless situation. We'll be back after this on Paying Attention. <laughs> Thank you. 